The 30 day cure period has completed for this canvas canoe. The filler is dry. It's actually harder than woodpecker lips at this point. It's uh, it's an extremely um, hardened surface at this point, and uh, thanks to the ingredients such as the silica within those uh, contents. So uh, now the hull needs to be sanded. I'm going to be using 220 grit sandpaper to smooth out the entire hull, and in preparation for the priming in the painting. What you got to be cautious of at this point is that you don't sand too much and actually get back down to the canvas weave. So you got to be deliberate and pay close attention that uh, there potentially could be areas where it gets a little thin. You just got to stop from that region. And if and if you were to exceed uh, the, the filler material, there are options that you can do by using some epoxy resin to uh, actually patch that area. But the goal is obviously not to uh, sand too much, but sand enough so you get that smooth shell ready to accept the paint for a nice smooth finish. So uh, that's the direction we're moving in now. I'm going to start sanding. It's going to take about uh, an hour uh, or two. I'm going to take it slow and then uh, clean it all up. So the sanding is complete of the filler coat on the canoe and it's been wiped down and all dust remnants have been removed in preparation for the primer coat. That's what's next. I've decided to go with the Rust-Oleum products. I've used it on several canoes and I've had outstanding results with that product. So uh, both the primer coat and the top coat will be Rust-Oleum Marine Topside coatings. And uh, that's the direction we're moving in right now. So this is going to be using the roll and tip method. I expect to use all of the primer coat, uh, all the primer material on this canoe. So I'll see how long, how far that stretches. Uh, I expect to get at least two coats on the canoe and then uh, move into the top coat of deep green. It's the deep green Rust-Oleum color. And marine topside coatings which uh, should bring this canoe back to life and uh, show a nice sheen and ni nice glossy semi-gloss finish so yeah I'm gonna get into the primer coating right now <laughs> give it about four to six hours maybe eight and then uh, I'll come back and smooth that all out so that the second coat of primer is going to go on even smoother and that'll set us up for success when we do the final top coat which is going to be about two coats uh, potentially three so I've gone over the hull with steel wool and just smoothed everything out it's got a real smooth feel to it now especially more so now after the steel wool and I just went over it with a, a light uh, wipe with a rag and very slight touch of acetone just to get the metal fibers off and any of the uh, remnants of, of the wool and I've also proceeded to mix my paint with a 5% thinner 
Uh, that's what's recommended per the Rust-Oleum instructions. So I went 20 ounces with one ounce of uh, paint thinner just to get it to flow a little bit better. And uh, I should go on this boat fairly nice. Uh, I'm gonna get started now. So you may be able to see behind me that uh, I did some sanding here. So <clears throat> this is the second coat now. And after the very first coat of the green, uh, the deep green Rust-Oleum topside marine coating, I sanded almost so all the paint was removed again, to, just to fill in all the dimples. And I used a orbital sander for that. So although all the paint wasn't removed, and a good, I'd say about half of it was removed, and then I applied, wiped it down with acetone, and then applied a second coat and just went over this with 220 dry sanding technique. And then I'm about ready to apply the third coat of paint. And then I'll go, I'm gonna do four coats, I believe. In between the third and fourth coat, I will then switch to wet sanding. So I, I changed up my strategy a little bit. I did more dry sanding in this painting evolution than I did on previous boats just because I felt that was gonna yield the best product. So I'm glad that I did that. This is uh, becoming extremely smooth. I'm excited to see what the third coat is gonna do to really fill in uh, some of the other dimples. Not not that there's a lot, but I mean, with, with the wood canvas canoe, the weave and everything, it's, it's hard to get everything extremely smooth. So yeah, I'm gonna be uh, mixing up my uh, Rust-Oleum paint, thinning it out slightly, less than before get the third coat on here come back tomorrow same time wet sand clean it up with a, a light dampened cloth of acetone get all that residue off and then the fourth and final coat so the fourth and final coat has cured and what i'm going to be doing next is just applying a coat of wax just to protect the the uh the sheen of the canoe until delivery and that'll also make it uh, more streamlined in the water and, and protect the paint maybe uh, slide off a rock or two uh, a little easier. And uh, once the waxing is done, I'm gonna flip the canoe over. I'm gonna get right into the steam bending of the outwheels. So I'm gonna steam bend them in place. I have uh, a Rockler steam generator that I'm gonna be just taping off at the center point and then <clears throat> clamping in place and then molding into shape. And uh, it's really an effective unit. I used it on the chestnut restoration and uh, very effective. I uh, look forward to using it again, to be honest. So then after, after the waxing and then the gunnels, uh, and the gunnels are fitted properly after steam bending, then the gunnels will be removed and then I'll get back into uh, <clears throat> final sanding of the gunnels, the outwheels. Finding the screw locations, I still have the old gunnels that were removed, the outwheels that were removed. And so I'll, I'll use different attachment points than uh, the previous outwheel. Uh, so I'm not reusing the same hole in the rib, although most of those holes, if not all of them, have been repaired uh, and filled in. So um, it wouldn't be that much of a problem. I'm just following the protocol here 
which is uh, it's recommended that you do not use the same holes again. So um, that's what I'm going to do and uh, get into waxing, get into the gunnels, and then it's going to be ready for uh, a few touch-ups. I uh, cut, the, cut the rest of the canvas off uh, right along the rib tops and then uh, attach them permanently and then uh, it'll be ready for the owner. So let's get to work. has been applied and the next thing to do is just to turn the canoe over and, and get into the steam bending. I'll take in for a closer look to see how nice this finish is. Really happy with it. It's pretty slick, almost as slick as a snake oil salesman, but it uh, should reduce the resistance in the water and uh, give a nice smooth paddle and protect it, it, the paint from oxidizing. Of course, another coat of wax will have to be applied in about six months or whatever, end of season paddling. Just put another coat on, clean it up, apply another coat of wax, store it for the winter. So into the steam bending we go. Okay, so the next move, now that I've cut away the, the majority of the excess canvas that was hanging over the gunnels, just going ahead with a regular utility knife and cutting it even with the planking uh, so that gives a nice resting surface for the out whales to be attached. So just carefully following along the top of the planking, the shear line planking, and uh, I'm just going to trim it all nice and neatly all the way around. And that'll be the final... Uh, dressing of the canvas required for this project. So I'm setting up now for steam bending and one of the products that I've purchased is this Rockler steam generator here and it's uh, the steam generator is just it's an electric unit and uh, here's the uh, discharge hose and it's a real practical unit. I always like to build my own things like that. I don't like to buy things like this, but when I saw this, I said, the heck, it's easy. I don't have to ruin one of my lobster pot pans. And um, it does a real fine job. So this hose is uh, going to be attached to the food grade bags that the gun, the gunnels will be inserted into and I just got regular food grade bags right here bought them on Amazon and these are the ones that you would use to uh, vacuum seal bags or whatever um, but it's just large enough that I can slide the out whale into this and then what I'll do is then clamp it onto the canoe and tape it at the midpoint so one of the talking points right here, epoxy doesn't do well with high temperature, especially steam application. So I don't have to bend the center line of the boat and that's where my scarf joints are with the gunnels. So I'm gonna tape the, uh, the food grade bag around the out whale previous to the scarf joint, uh, just to protect the, uh, the epoxy joint there. And then uh, I'll just bend it back. I'll bend the entire gunnel to match the profile of this canoe. 
So it's a real simple process. Rockler, steam generator, food grade bag, a little bit of tape, and uh, you just sit and wait and let it go. It'll saturate the entire wood. I also think that this would be a good idea for those that like to soak their gunnels over a period of two days prior to attachment. Um, instead of like if you don't have a pond, you don't have access to something that'll accept the length of a piece of wood like this. I almost was, was going to do this. Um, just inserting the gunnels into the food grade bag and then just tying it off kind of like a manometer type deal and then letting it soak and then just emptying it in my in my uh, sump pump just a thought I mean you, you can definitely soak within these bags as well so I'm going to start uh, inserting the outwales into the food grade bags, get them clamped on, tape it off where it needs to be, start up the steam generator, and then just let it do its thing. Now in order for the other outwheel to be steam bended and attached, I need to cut this side or otherwise there'll be interference here and it won't lay flat. So I'm just gonna give it a cut. I'm gonna be going at a forward angle, similar, just about right there. And then I'll use my sliding bevel when I have the other one on to match that angle. Perfect. And this will get sanded down. I'll round this over so there's no sharp edges. And like I said, I'll use my sliding bevel to match this angle. And then of course the stem band still needs to be attached. And that'll cover up the seam of the canvas. So yeah, it's coming together. Okay, so now with the port side done, I'm going to start uh, rigging up for the starboard side.
start doing some more steaming. So the outwheels have been steam bended, clamped, and dried overnight. I had the dehumidifier in the shop going all night long to absorb most of that moisture. It's very dry right now. And the next step for me is so I'm not utilizing the same holes from the previous outwheels that I will be uh, reattaching temporarily the old outwheel that uh, I, I saved for this purpose. I'll clamp it in place and then just mark uh, alternate holes from the exit from the old outwheel screw locations. So I'm tapping into a new rib and uh, give it more integrity. I'm going to do that now. Just to get a general idea of where all the screw holes were. Then I'll just go along and mark each each one. So the old outwheels were temporarily attached and the ribs have been marked onto the new outwheel and now I'm getting ready to drill through the outwheel into the inwheel through the ribs and then I'll remove the outwheels at that point and sand them and then polyurethane them so I can get some uh, material down into those drill holes for uh, added um, preservation and uh, also to sand and, and clean up these these outwheels. I've already screwed the port side outwheel into place using Robertson screws. Going with these Robertson screws here, square head. And because it generates a lot of heat, I like to just squirt a little bit of penetrating oil. In this case, it's just WD-40 into the uh, the prepared hole just to keep it from burning breaking there you go just have about 30 more to do so the stern stem band has been installed and what's remaining is the forward or bow stem band install and i'm about to do that right now i didn't film the stern so i'll show you what i'm doing here it's a matter of uh just placing the stem band which has been salvaged i previously mentioned that and cleaned up and just centering it here on the bow stem itself and, and it's an eyeball situation not too hard to do now I'm just going to punch where that's going to go. And the next step is going to be, and I'll, and I'll show you exactly what it is, but it's bedding compound that goes behind the stem band. And what that does, serves two purposes. To attach the stem band, you're actually screwing back through the new canvas that we just finished. And uh, in order to make that as uh, watertight as possible, the bedding compound, which I purchased from Northwoods Canoe Company, is the product that you, that you would use behind the stem band. The stem band is concave on the section behind it. I don't know if you can see that, um, but 
it's it's concave and and it will accept uh, some compound behind it and so when you screw down through the stem band through the canvas well it's going to provide some uh, watertight integrity there and it also serves as sealing the seams of the canvas where they come together on both bow and stern stems so i'm just going to get into and oh and another thing to mention too is bedding compound is not required where there's a wood surface it's only on the canvas surfaces so kind of like from the tip of the stem and it'll wrap down along the keel uh, nothing topside on where the wood where it comes in contact with the wood would bedding compound be required there yeah so we're just going to get into uh, putting the bedding compound on the stem band itself I've already located my my set my center punch hole for the first screw on the deck and once I have the bedding compound in that concave slot of the stem band, then I'll start screwing it down and then cleaning it up with a cloth. It cleans up real nice, especially since I waxed the hull. This is your bedding compound here. And it's just a, a recipe used by Northwoods Canoe Company. Uh, not exactly sure. I know there's some boiled linseed oil in there, but the, the true quality of this bedding compound is that it stays flexible for a good length of time. It doesn't dry up, shrink, or crack. So it's a perfect application for this behind the stem band. Then it's a matter of just applying a liberal amount on the stem band itself. You don't have to be too neat at this stage because We'll be cleaning it up off the hull. And you want it, you want the excess to squeeze out. No particular tool to use. I'm just using a little stick, trying to keep it off my hands. You want to fill that concave groove so that when you screw the stem band tight to the hull, it compresses this brass stem band and, and squeezes out excess, creating a seal. Now it's time to attach. I'm going to be pre-drilling the deck with an eighth inch bit. This is a hardwood deck. Well, the project is complete. Just finished putting on the stem bands this morning. Another coat of varnish on the gunnels, the outwales. And now it's just a matter of just touching it up, uh, cleaning it up really, no touch-ups really. Um, a few um, paint areas around where the stem band meets the deck. Uh, just, a, just a little touch. And overall, just letting the varnish cure and delivering it to its rightful owner. So it's been a great project. Thank you all for the comments, following along. Uh, I hope to do more of these in the future, obviously. I, I've had a couple people contact me about restoring their canoes for them. And I enjoy the work, so uh, reach out to me if that's something that you're interested in. And uh, yeah, just uh, time to get back to house projects that the wife is asking me to do. Kind of like, you know, decks and landscaping and pulling shrubs and all that other good stuff. So I guess I got to get back to uh, not having so much fun like this project here. Thanks for following along. I truly appreciate it.